Big news! We can today reveal that Team Group has redefined the word exclusive. And that's interesting because their T-Force Vulcan Alpha DDR5 memory exclusively supports AMD. And yet here it is running on an Intel Core i9-13900K on a Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master. What does that mean? Well, the explanation is simple. In addition to XMP, this memory also supports AMD Expo. On the table I have six kits of DDR5 memory. At the bottom of the range we have this Corsair Vengeance rated at 5200 which costs £160 for 32 gigabytes. That runs on Micron memory. The other five kits all use SK Hynix silicon and the top of the pile is this Corsair Platinum Dominator RGB which costs £360 and is rated at 7000 mega transfers. That's a significant range of price, physical dimensions and of course speed. Let's take a quick look at each of these kits, checking out the speed of the modules, the latency timings, whether or not it has RGB, a tall or short heat spreader and whether or not it supports Expo. The Corsair Vengeance 5200 has a latency of C38 and runs its Micron chips on 1.25 volts, stands 30 millimeters tall above the motherboard and does not have RGB. Kingston Fury Beast rated at 6000 has a latency of C40 and runs its Hynix chips on 1.35 volts, standing 38 millimeters above the motherboard it has medium height heat spreaders. It also has very good RGB. G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB rated at 6000 has a low latency of C30. It runs the Hynix chips on 1.35 volts and also has very good RGB. Thermal Take Tough Ram XG RGB rated at 6000 has a latency of C36 and runs its Hynix chips on 1.3 volts and has RGB. The mighty Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB rated at 7000 has a latency of C34 and requires 1.45 volts for those Hynix chips. Very tall modules standing 52 mil above the motherboard and has amazing RGB. And finally the Team Group T-Force Vulcan Alpha rated at 6000 has a latency of C38, runs the Hynix chips on 1.25 volts which is quite low and has heat spreaders that stand a mere 30 mil tall. This kit does not have RGB. And there I am talking about RGB that's either good or very good but you're not going to believe my words. I'm going to have to show you what the RGB looks like in action. To show off the RGB in the memory and also to test the performance of this DDR5 I've resurrected my Fractal Design North review PC. I've swapped out the motherboard for an ASUS ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi. I chose that board because obviously it's not intended for gamers, it's intended for professionals. It's a high-end quality motherboard we have not reviewed here at KitGuru or not yet. And I wanted to see how it performed with this array of DDR5. We're looking here for solid performance. We do not want any flakiness. The graphics card is the one I used when I reviewed this case, Sapphire Radeon RX 6800 XT. And the cooler is also the one I used during my review of the case. It is a Fractal Design Celsius Plus S28 Prisma, so 280mm AIO. Plenty of air rushing through the case, none of these sets of memory got the slightest bit hot. So let's take a look at each of the sets of memory in action, starting with the Corsair Vengeance 5200, which has no RGB and almost vanishes inside the case. Then we have the G-Skill Trident Z RGB, which has gorgeous lighting. After that, we have the Kingston Fury Beast, also with some impressive lighting. And then Thermal Takes Tough Ram XG RGB with some prominent light bars on top of the heat spreaders. Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB has Capellix lighting that looks just mind blowing in my opinion. And we finish up with the T-Force Vulcan Alpha, which has no RGB, as you can see.
Enabling Expo in the BIOS is exactly the same process as enabling XMP. So the memory by default is running at 4800 mega transfers. Uh, flick the digital switch and all being well, the memory then runs at its rated speed. All of this memory did with the exception of the Dominator Platinum. I didn't honestly expect that this 7000 mega transfer memory would behave correctly on this motherboard with my Ryzen 7 7700 but I fancy giving it a try just to see. So this memory does not feature in our charts. In our first chart, the 7-zip benchmark, the Team Group T-Force Vulcan Alpha is at the top of the chart. Admittedly, the margin of separation is quite small, but you can see the 5200 Corsair Vengeance at the bottom of the chart is significantly slower than the other memory. Next up, ADA 64 memory bandwidth. At the top of the chart, we have the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB. This has a very low latency, only C30. So the fact it's rated at 6,000 like the other memory, clearly the latency gives it just a little bit of an edge. After the G-Skill, we have the T-Force Vulcan Alpha, and then the Thermal Take and the Kingston Fury Beast. Once again, the Corsair Vengeance 5200, is at the bottom of the chart. 3D Mark Time Spy. This is just the CPU test. We're not including the graphics in this test. At the top of the chart, it's the T-Force Vulcan Alpha. Admittedly, by a small margin, but it does win. Followed by the Kingston Fury Beast, then the G-Skill and the Thermal Take. Once again, the 5200 Corsair at the bottom. And then we have a quick gaming test, our old friend Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p. It has to be said, this is essentially a dead heat because the graphics are really the limiting factor here. So at the top of the chart, by like a single frame, we have a tie between the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB and the T-Force Vulcan Alpha. And then a single frame behind, we have the other three sets of memory. So really, the memory plays very little part here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080, there is some separation. At the top of the chart, it's the Kingston Fury Beast. That came as a surprise to me. Rated at 6,000, but C40 latency. Then, a tiny distance behind, we see the Thermaltake Tough Ram. Again, rated at 6,000, and with latency of C36. Behind that, we have the T-Force Vulcan Alpha, and then the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB. At the bottom of the chart, it's the Corsair Vengeance. If we simply look at the four sets of 6000 memory, honestly, I expected the results to be the other way up. My interpretation of those charts is that in terms of performance, one set of 6000 memory is much the same as another set of 6000 memory. Lower latency is nice, but really the thing that matters is whether or not the memory can be relied on to run at its rated speed. It gave me some reassurance that this memory was happy to run with its Expo profile as supported by my Ryzen 7 processor. The thing is, it didn't cause me any pain that this hugely expensive 7000 mega transfer memory doesn't want to run on this processor. But of course, I didn't pay for that Corsair memory. Had I punted on that memory and laid out the cache and it had turned up and not worked, that would have been a tragedy. In addition to the confidence of the Expo profile, this memory is quite cheap. This set sells for £180 here in the UK. If you can find some of this now rather elderly Vengeance 5200, you'll find it on sale for about £160. You have to step up to £210 or £215 for the Kingston Fury Beast or the Thermal Take Tough Ram XG. The G-Skill Trident Z5 sadly sells for about 275 here in the UK, which is clearly rather a lot. And as previously mentioned, although slightly irrelevant in the context of this AMD system, the Dominator Platinum RGB is going to cost you 360. We can conclude from that that the two major selling points of the Vulcan Alpha DDR5 are the confidence that the Expo profile is going to work with your AMD Zen 4 processor, and of course, it's cheap. And so we come to my pros and cons, my views on this T-Force Vulcan Alpha memory. Pros, the good points. The 6000 mega transfer rated speed gives you good solid performance with AMD Zen 4. If you push much past 6000, it can go horribly wrong. 6000, in the view of KitGuru, is the right speed on AMD. 
The memory modules have low profile heat sinks. This is very useful if you're putting your cooler in the roof of the case, you want low profile memory. Indeed, it's why we've long liked uh, Corsair's Vengeance. So 30 mil heat sinks, good thing. The next pro is that the Expo profile gives you confidence. You plug in the memory, you enable it, it works. With memory that supports XMP on AMD, it's a bit of a toss of the coin, the throw of the dice. And the fourth point is that the price is nice and low, which is a rare thing to say in this day and age. Cons, the negative points, just the one. You don't get any RGB with this memory. I think it's entirely reasonable to pay a £30 premium for RGB, provided it's decent. Uh, of course, potentially it means that the uh, heat sinks are slightly taller to accommodate the light bar. But putting that to one side, were there an RGB version of this T-Force with the Expo profile and you paid a premium, that would be perfectly okay. But as things stand, this is cheap, cheerful, no RGB, and it runs like a train. It's a must-have. It's a 9 out of 10.